In this screencast, I'm going to review the processes of external and internal respiration. We're going to start with external respiration, and that's the processes that exist between the alveoli and the capillaries. Remember, the alveoli have a very thin membrane, and capillaries have a very thin membrane, so diffusion is going to occur between these two structures. Now let's start with you taking a deep breath in. When you take a deep breath in, you're going to breathe in oxygen and you're going to breathe in very little CO2. So what that means is that the air in the alveoli is going to have a high partial pressure of oxygen and a low partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Now the blood coming from the body, and in this case specifically from the right side of the heart, is going to have a high partial pressure of carbon dioxide and a low partial pressure of oxygen. If you don't understand why this exists, I will go over it in the next slide. So here comes the blood from the right side of the heart, from the body, and you have the air from the alveoli. Now we've already discussed this, how the air in the alveoli is high partial pressure of oxygen, low partial pressure CO2 that the blood in the capillaries has a high partial pressure of CO2 and a low partial pressure of oxygen. So the next question is, is because diffusion can occur here because you have thin membranes, which way is oxygen and CO2 going to diffuse? You use your basic law of diffusion that molecules that are small enough, and these are CO2 and O2 are, will diffuse from an area of high concentration or partial pressure to an area of low concentration or low partial pressure. So which way are these molecules going to go? Oxygen is going to go from high concentration partial pressure in the alveoli to a low concentration in the capillaries. So oxygen will diffuse from the alveoli into the bloodstream, high to low. CO2 is going to do what? CO2 is going to go from a high concentration or partial pressure in the capillaries to a low concentration or partial pressure in the alveoli. So that's where the movement of molecules will occur and that's the direction that they will occur. So what will the blood look like after the blood passes this area of the alveoli? What will the blood look like here? It will have a high concentration of oxygen and a low concentration of CO2 because of this process of diffusion that occurred at the alveoli. And where will that travel? That will travel to the body. And it will actually go to the left side of the heart first and then it will be pumped out to the body. Now, one more thing on this slide. We now have this CO2 that diffused from the blood into the alveoli where is it going to go? When you breathe out, that CO2 will leave the body. So that's how we get rid of the waste product carbon dioxide. Now let's now follow this blood to the body. It will first actually go to the left side of the heart. The left side of the heart will then pump it out to the body. It'll go through a large number of blood vessels until it gets down again to a blood vessel called a capillary which again has a thin membrane. These are the cells of the body. Every cell of the body needs to be close to a capillary because this is how it's going to get its oxygen and get rid of its carbon dioxide. So we've got a thin membrane here, a thin membrane here, and here comes the blood from the lungs and the left side of the heart. So here it comes, here. Now let's talk about the O2 and CO2 levels in the cells and why they are the way they are. What cells are going to do, and we talked about this when we talked about muscles, but it happens in all cells. When cells carry out their functions, whether it's a muscle cell, which is what I've drawn here, and it's contracting, it's going to use oxygen. And when you use oxygen, when a cell uses oxygen, it produces CO2. Right, it produces CO2. So what you're going to see in a cell is you're going to see a higher concentration of carbon dioxide and a lower concentration of oxygen. Why? Because the cell used the oxygen and when it used the oxygen to make energy it produced CO2. So again we have now this process of the blood in the capillary and the blood in the cell. What's going to happen? 
This process is called internal respiration between the capillary and the cells of the body. So again, following your basic rules of diffusion, which way is oxygen going to move and which way is CO2 going to move? Okay, so there's your question. Hopefully you've come up with an answer on your own before I say it, but here's what's going to happen. Carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is going to diffuse from the cells into the capillaries from a high partial pressure concentration to a low. Oxygen, on the other hand, is going to diffuse from the capillaries into the cells. Then the cells can use this oxygen that it gets and again produce more CO2. So what's the blood look like after leaving the cell? It's going to be high in carbon dioxide and low in oxygen because this oxygen went into the cell, so you don't have a lot left when you get past the cell, and the carbon dioxide came from the cell and is now in the blood. This blood will then travel to the right side of the heart. It will travel to the right side of the heart, and then we go back, let me just show you real quick, we go back, and this is the blood that you see here that's coming from the body, coming from then the right side of the heart, up here, diffusion, and we get rid of the CO2. So the CO2 that's actually produced in the body cell goes into the blood, up to the right side of the heart, goes into the lungs, specifically alveoli, diffuses into the alveoli, and then you breathe it out. The oxygen that you breathed in goes into the alveoli, diffuses into the bloodstream, heads to the body through the left side of the heart, heads down to the cells, gets into the cells, and then the cells can use that oxygen to make the energy they need to carry out their functions. So again, just review this, okay? Review this over and over again. Go through the questions that we did in the PowerPoint. Make sure you can answer those, and then you should have no problem with this section of the test.